At my first video about oscilloscopes, I demonstrated how to handle those measurement instrument. This second video is about observational errors and the limits of accuracy. The instrument used here is a DSO 2090 USB. DSO means Digital Storage Oscilloscope. The appendix USB indicates that those instrument is connected to a personal computer via an USB interface. The measurement values are displayed at a computer monitor with the help of the program OpenHuntec in version 0 0.2.0 .0 running on SUSE 11.4 with GNOME desktop. There are three input connectors at the front side. Two of them are for the input channels and the third one is for external trigger signals. At the back side there is one USB connector and a pin at the left side which is connected to the ground of the oscilloscope. The right pin is connected to a square wave signal with a peak to peak voltage of 2 volts and a frequency of 1 kHz. This signal can be used for the calibration of the oscilloscope, as we will see some later at this video. For the first measurement I will connect those signal pin to the first input channel with the help of a probe. The clamp of the probe is connected to the ground pin and the tip of the probe is pushed slightly to the output pin of the calibration signal. Like expected, we can see the 1 kHz square wave signal at the monitor. How perfectly do the measured values hit the set point? The automatically calculated frequency of the input signal fluctuates slightly around 1 kHz. The accuracy of the DSO2090 is 3%. So the measured value for the periodic time should be between 1030 and 970 microseconds. The resulting frequency is between 1031 and 971 Hz. The frequency calculated by the software is inside of the expected range. 3% of 2 volts which is the set point of the peak to peak voltage equals 0.06 volts. So the measured value should be somewhere between 2.06 and 1.94 volts. Striking are the rounded corners at the upper end of the S scanning slope respectively at the lower end of the D scanning slope. Those aberrations from the square shape are affected by a capacitance inside of the circuit. The cables of the probe are forming a stretched capacitor and according to the data sheet, the capacitance of the whole unit is 47 picofarad. Additionally, the capacitance of the electric circuit of the oscilloscope is 50 picofarad. Let's zoom the area of the ascending slope by reducing the time base. By attaching the second probe to the pin of the test signal, a second capacitor is connected in parallel to the first input channel too. Like expected, the curve becomes more rounded. Those effect increases as soon as I am connecting a 470 nanofarad capacitor between the ground pin and the signal pin. The capacitance of the measurement equipment should be as low as possible. Like explained at the video about digital multimeters, the inner impedance of a measurement instrument has always to be considered. I am now connecting a chain out of three 220 kilo ohm resistors to the signal output of the oscilloscope. The inner impedance of the voltage source is low enough so that there is no measurable decrease of the peak to peak voltage of the calibration signal. And now I am connecting the probe of channel number 1 in parallel to the first resistor of the chain. 
we would expect to measure a voltage of one third of the total voltage, hence 0.66 volts. The displayed value is just 5.9 divisions, which equals a value of 0.59 volts. Concerning the deviation of the oscilloscope, which is 3%, the measured value should be between 0.68 and 0.64 volts. The fact that the measured value is lower than one third of the total voltage is caused by the inner impedance of the input channel, which is 1 mega ohm. By connecting the probe, the voltage ratio of the resistor network shifts and the voltage drop at the first resistor decreases to just 0.58 volts. Concerning the deviation, the measured value should be between 0.60 and 0.56 volts, which is the case for the 0.59 volts we can see at the curve. As soon as I am connecting the second probe in parallel to the resistor 2, the peak to peak voltage decreases again, because now there are two 1 mega ohm resistors in parallel to the first resistor of the chain. The measured value of input channel number 1 drops down to 0 volt as soon as I am connecting the probe of channel number 2 in parallel to the middle resistor of the chain. That's because of the fact that the two input channels of the DSO2090 are not independent from each other. Both are connected to the ground line of the oscilloscope. By connecting the ground clamp of the second probe to the middle resistor of the chain, the first resistor gets bypassed. The ground clamps of the probes have always to be connected to the ground connection of the circuit under test, or else devices of those circuit may be damaged. The oscilloscope can be damaged too, if the ground clamp of a probe is connected to the positive terminal of the circuit under test. High quality oscilloscopes are electronically fused against those kind of shortcut. The software used here has a feature which makes it possible to calculate the curve progression of the voltage at the middle resistor. First we have to connect the ground clamp of the second probe to the ground pin of the oscilloscope once again. Channel number 1 displays the voltage drop at resistor number 1 and channel number 2 those at the resistors number 1 and number 2. The difference of both voltages, hence voltage of channel number 2 minus channel number 1 is displayed as a grey line. Once again I am connecting the ground clamp of probe number 2 between resistor number 1 and number 2. The displayed signal of the bypassed resistor at channel number 1 is not a flat line, but a thin band. Even when connecting the ground clamp directly to the tip of the probe, no flat line is displayed. Let's have a closer look at the band by switching the input channel to a higher sensitivity. The zero volt input level is widened by noise voltage. One source of error is electromagnetic radiation, which is emitted by nearly all electronic devices. The cabling of the probe is done by a coaxial cable, by what it is shielded against those radiation, but the cabling of the ground clamp forms a non-shielded conductor loop. Voltage is generated as soon as altering magnetic fields are passing those loop. If I am moving the probe closer to the power supply of the computer, the influence of the electromagnetic radiation increases and the band is widened. With the help of a metal case, the electromagnetic radiation acting on the conductor loop can be cancelled out. 
but there is still no flat line at the computer screen. Another source of error is the power supply of the oscilloscope via the USB interface. The DC voltage provided by the computer is not perfect. I am connecting input channel number 1 to the voltage pin of another USB cable and the resulting curve indicates the disturbance caused by the input voltage of the oscilloscope. The better the filtering of the input voltage, the smaller the influence of those source of error becomes. There is another reason why a line at the display of a digital oscilloscope is not always a line. It's the resolution of the used analog to digital converter. The DSO2090 uses an 8-bit converter. Those converter can detect 256 different values at a selected range. Let's have a look at the sine curve of the output voltage of an adjustable transformer. I am zooming in to a nearly linear area of the curve progression. Instead of a flat line, you can see the discrete values of the converter. At the selected range of 5V per division, 40V equal the highest value of the analog to digital converter, which is 255. A single step equals the maximum value divided by 256, which is 0.16V. To get a higher resolution of the curve progression, another analog to digital converter is required. A 10-bit converter can display 1024 discrete values, by what a single step equals just 0.04V. Another limit of an oscilloscope is the number of measurements per second, or vice versa, the time span needed to capture a single value. Let's have a look at the square wave signal of my homemade function generator. One pulse lasts for 260 nanoseconds. It is striking that the displayed pulse is pacing around its horizontal position. The measurement can be stopped by pressing the pause button. At the adjusted time base of 40 nanoseconds per division, you can clearly see spikes at the curve progression. The reason for this is the fact that the horizontal adjustment is near the limit of the oscilloscope's time base. The analog to digital converter needs 10 nanoseconds to capture a single value. So according to the horizontal adjustment, there is just one single measurement each 10 nanoseconds, which equals more than 0.2 divisions, hence the single points can be recognized clearly. By adjusting a time base of 10 nanoseconds, one division equals one point of measurement, hence the curve becomes a zigzag line. The software adjustment is clearly below the physical limits of the DSO2090, hence a time base below 100 nanoseconds is not useful for measurements with those oscilloscope. 10 nanoseconds for a single measurement means that 100 million measurements can be done in one second. The sampling rate is 100 mega samples per second. The sinusoidal signal with a frequency of 8 MHz caused by an oscillating crystal is captured by just 12 values per oscillation, hence it is clearly disordered. To be able to do meaningful measurements of the curve progression, a higher sampling rate is required. You can barely identify those displayed curves as a sinusoidal oscillation. The higher the sampling rate, the more bytes have to be transferred in one second. While using a sampling rate of 100 mega samples per second and a resolution of 8 bit, one byte is needed for one sample, hence 100 megabytes are accumulated during one second. The oscilloscope is connected to the PC via an USB 2.0 interface which can't transmit more than 24 megabytes per second, 
Hence, some data is skipped. The internal memory of the DSO 2090 can store 64,000 samples. If both channels are used, only 32,000 samples per channel can be stored. We can see that some samples are skipped while looking at two oscillations with just a slight difference in frequency. The input signal of channel number 1 triggers the measurement and it has a frequency of 71 Hz and the signal of channel number 2 has a frequency of 62 Hz. We would expect to see curve number 2 moving slowly in relation to curve number 1. Instead, we can see curve number 2 pacing around its horizontal position. The higher the transfer rate between oscilloscope and PC, the smoother the movement becomes. Let's have a look at the maximal and minimal input voltage. Once again, I am connecting the mass clamp to the tip of the probe. Now I am adjusting the vertical alignment to the lowest value possible, which is 10 mV per division. At the data sheet, there is no statement about the minimal difference in potential, which can be detected by the DSO 2090, but we can see that there are just four different values between two points of the scale. A quarter of one point of the scale equals 0.05 divisions, hence the limit is 0.05 multiplied by 10 mV which equals 0.5 mV. The maximal input voltage is 35 volts. To be able to measure higher voltages, partial probes have to be used. By pulling the switch from position 1 to position 10, the probe transfers only one tenth of the voltage connected to its tip to the input channel of the oscilloscope. The displayed value has to be multiplied by 10 to get the effective voltage. The maximal voltage which can be measured is 350 volts by now. But heads up, high voltages are dangerous to life. And if you forget to switch the probe to position 10 before starting the measurement, you will destroy the oscilloscope. Attention should be paid to the fact that the electric properties of the probe alter by pulling the switch. At this type of probe, the inner impedance increases from 1 up to 10 mega ohm and the capacitance decreases from 47 down to 15.5 picofarad. An adjustable capacitor allows to compensate distortions caused by the voltage divider while switched to position 10. While attached to the calibration signal of the oscilloscope, the capacitor can be adjusted in such a way that the square wave signal is displayed correctly. That's all about measurement errors of oscilloscopes up to the present. Thanks for watching and bye for now.